Hi guys and welcome back and today we'll crack on with part 2 of the building of the M26 Pershing. So not surprisingly we'll start with step 1 which is the lower hull assembly. And you've got a few little metal bits here and some screws and some nuts and some washers and the like. The hull is a bathtub assembly. So first thing we'll do is start cutting some stuff off the sprue. So I like to cut all the pieces off for each step and then I mark them off on the actual instructions and then I go through the cleanup process so I know I've got all the pieces, they're all cleaned up and should be able to go straight into construction without any dramas. Now might be a good time to have a look at the sprues overall. Typical Tamiya, really well moulded, some really clean details, virtually no flash that I could see whatsoever. If there is, it's very, very minor, but great crispness in the moulding and uh, the plastic is the plastic that we all love it just works and handles very nicely seam lines where you'd expect to get seam lines but they're easily cleaned up with a sharp blade and a little file but overall incredibly happy and i've been so looking forward to building this kit now i really just can't wait to get started so these are all the parts that are actually required for step one of the build so starting with getting some of the suspension components in place and then progressively adding on the plastic, you can see all this stuff. So I'll pop back in a little bit later on when we come to taillights. So I'm incredibly tempted to put some of the little uh, micro LEDs in for the taillights and there's no earthly valid reason for me to do this other than the fact that uh, I just like mucking around with doing stuff like that and I think it might look quite nice and I've got lots of different colored little LEDs that I could use and the upper hull has already got a readily accessible power source so it won't take a lot to do so i've pre-drilled those out in anticipation and uh, haven't made my mind up yet but i think i'm a fair chance to do it so on we go with step two now and the first thing to notice here is if you want the workable suspension you just have to remove these little lugs on the side there here are all the parts there's the previously mentioned lugs that need to come off and just nip them off fairly simply and gave them a bit of a polish with a standing stick and my exacto blade to get it all off and just gluing some more stuff on Step three is the final gear case and the front suspension. So these are all the parts. And you 
just have to get that little screw in the right place. Step four is attaching the suspension. And again, if you want these to be workable, don't use any glue, just use the little poly caps instead. Step five is the rear suspension, just a couple of parts here. And just testing and adjusting to make sure the metal arm fits nicely and snugly into the slotted groove. On to step seven, which is the wheel assembly. So time to glue the wheel together, just using some Tamiya Extra Thin. And then as I position them, I align the little remnant marks for where I cut them off the sprue. And that way I'm only sanding in one place on each side if I've got them lined up, so killing two birds with one stone effectively. And the only reason I'm using the Revel glue here is so I can just smash them out and glue them all together at once and then have time to position them so the little witness marks are aligned ready for cleaning up later on. Just putting the drive sprocket wheels together now. and cleaning up those little marks on the other wheels. And here's the gang all together. I was going to try and do this like a footy team photo, but everything kept falling over. And after 20 minutes, I realized no one would care. Step eight is attaching the wheels and also a couple of little parts, A1 and A2, which just sit on top of the metal suspension arms.
using the Revel glue here again for the return rollers and that's mainly so I've got time to make sure they're all beautifully lined up and straight and square and level with each other. when you suddenly realize, oh dear, I've forgotten something. You can literally see the tiny little cogs in my brain grinding really slowly as I come to the realization that I've forgotten something. So I could go two ways here. I could have used some glue to apply to the already cured join and try and de-glue them. But quite frankly, de-gluing sounds far too much like de-gloving, and that freaks me out. So I decided I would just force the damn things in because no one would see that side, and just carved away a bit of material and shoved them in. So from a recovery point of view, that worked really well, and uh, the suspensional suspensions bouncing up and down and uh, overall pretty happy with the result, even though I did have a minor cock up. So this is the step after eight and the step before nine. So I guess it's eight and a half and that's putting the rubber tracks together. So this is where we'll have a departure from building it out of the box and use the first of the aftermarket gear. Now these tracks are fine. I think they look really good, but I love the frural metal tracks and I picked these up a while when I was sort of first envisaging, when I was first thinking about this diorama and uh, I've used them before on the Panther and I, I think they're wonderful. My only complaint would be the instructions were a bit vague in terms of how many lengths of each type of track because they've got two slightly different pieces, but uh, I was able to figure that out. It wasn't rocket science. So we'll get stuck into the frill tracks and for this particular one, they have a left hand track and a right hand track. And then they've also got some additional pieces just for where the bends take place. So there's a little hole in there to receive the pin and on the other side to take the pin. And the uh, best practice is just to drill those out. Almost all of them needed to be drilled out anyway. And then just give it the once over for little bits of, I guess, metallic flash. Lumps and bumps that shouldn't be there that you can just take off of a file or perhaps a sharp exacto depending upon your preferences. I've got a 0.4 mil drill bit in my little Dremel and there's a slight depression where the hole needs to be moulded in so that makes it pretty easy to line up and if you just follow that you really can't go too wrong. Just have to be careful not to drill into your own fingers which of course I did on a couple of occasions um, but that's sort of minor in my case. And then it comes with this little brass wire and that fits in nicely and it's just rinse and repeat. So just cutting the wire now and they're in three millimeter lengths and a little bit fiddly to do this because of the ruler and uh, trying to juggle the ruler, the blade and the wire and my dodgy eyes, but anyway, we persevered. And then carefully drilling out in readiness to receive the wire. And using my five second fix, joining the tracks together, sliding the pin in, trimming to size, and then just 
just a little dob of the UV cure glue, hit it with the light for five seconds. Job's done. And again, as I said before, and then it's rinse and repeat a lot of times. So it becomes a fairly monotonous task. But if you prep well and you've got all your bits and pieces ready, then you just have to get into a, a zen-like state and motor on. Now, it was at this point that I had a bit of an epiphany about how putting these tracks together could be done better. That was largely driven by the fact that on my left hand, those newly healed fingers were finding it really hard going hanging onto the metal tracks, and they've got some reasonably pointy bits on them there, and they were starting to cause me a bit of pain. So I thought there's got to be an easier way of doing this, and inspired by my legendary tank commander of the Haladonian Armed Forces, I thought he'd find a better way. I have to find a better way. So the first thing I did was to make a little jig out of plastic card so I could cut off consistent lengths of the wire to pin the tracks together. Now I know it's marked 4mm but I whacked a little bit of extra plastic card in on the inside to bring it back down to 3 because the ability to remember something for 30 seconds from measuring it to putting it on my plan seems to escape me. And so here's my little jig in action and given it took all of five minutes to make. Uh, I think it saved me lots more minutes than that. I'm suggesting it might have saved me over an hour of uh, painstakingly measuring and cutting and moving. Sort of efficient because it captures the off-cut pieces most of the time and uh, did lead to some consistent uh, cutting. Then it's clean up as per normal. There's no guide included as to the number of the special pieces of tracks that you have to use in the marked sections, so I did my best guesstimate, which virtually turned out to be spot on from my initial guess. And then all I had to do was find my little desk clamp, my PE bender, and I thought if I could combine the two, and I was lucky because the clamp opened up wide enough to accept the PE bender, and the back of the P bender opened up wide enough to accept the tracks. And from this point onwards, it was all absolutely plain sailing. And then it was just a matter of finding a slightly different Zen state and a hell of a lot easier, less wear and tear on the fingers. I think way more accurate. And so just a little bit of vision for you, and then we'll come back and have a look at the finished job. And so that's about it. We're two-thirds of the way through with the lower hull finished now. So the next video will be dealing with the upper hull and the turret. And that's where all of the PE comes into play. So I didn't want to try and squeeze it all into one hour-long video because I think that's too much to, uh, to ask you to bear. So the second one will be out soon. I'll literally start work on it as soon as I upload this video. So that's it guys, 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Making progress, although not uh, with lightning speed. The next one should be good with all of the P going on and the metal barrel and the likes. And uh, really, uh, the, the build will be finished at the end of the third installment. So really looking forward to that. As always, really appreciate your time. Like if you liked, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, share because that's um, a good thing apparently. And as always, look forward to your comments below and we'll respond to all of them. So take care everyone, stay safe and healthy and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.